Hello students, with the initiatives of MHRD to promote online lectures during this lockdown period, today I am going to speak something about the morphology of ocean basins. Right? So, to begin with, first of all, we should know what is oceanography. Actually, this word oceanography is made up of two Greek words. The first one being okeanos, that means oceans, and the graphia, that means description. So, basically, this oceanography is the description about the oceans. There is another word that is oceanology. It is made, if you split up this oceanology, it will be okeanos, that means oceans, and logos meaning the study or the science of. So, it is basically the science of studying the oceans. So, it can also be said that oceanology is a more comprehensive term that just gives you description or information about the oceans but the term oceanography is more popular compared to oceanology so oceanography is used more commonly compared to oceanology so to begin with the morphology of ocean basins what i have done is i have divided this video lecture into two parts the first one that would deal with the continental shelf and the continental slope while the second part would deal with the deep ocean plains and the ocean trenches okay so before coming to that there are two terms that need to be kept in mind the first one is hypsometry or hypsography and the second one is bathymetry okay so this hypsographic or hypsometric curves what they do is they represent the different heights of the features present on the lithosphere and the hydrosphere so if we look into the ocean basins hypsometry or hypsography it is the measurement of the earth's elevation above the sea level okay that means these would represent the positive relief features which are above the mean sea level while bathymetry it is the study of the depth zones of the ocean basins by means of sounding techniques that means here, bathos, since it stands for depth and metry as is obvious as measurement, so this bathymetry, it talks about the negative relief features. That means features that are present below the mean sea level. So, to sum up, hypsometry talks about the positive relief features, while bathymetry, it deals with the negative relief features. Okay. So, the study of the measurement of ocean basins is not new. The first such study where the measurement of ocean depth was carried out was in 85 BC for the Mediterranean Sea. Later on, the scientifically devised bathymetric studies of ocean depth that was carried out in 1872 AD during the Challenger expedition. Here Challenger is the name of the vessel and this expedition was carried out during 1872 to 1876. With further developments in the sounding techniques, which use sonar, that is, sound navigation and ranging, the study of bathymetry was enriched. So, the first such uh, sonar technology was used in a German expedition, that was the Meteor Expedition, that was carried out in 1925 AD. Here, the undersea mountain range was located in the central South Atlantic Ocean, and that ranged from equatorial region to the Antarctic region. Further, the development of PDR, that means the precision depth recorder, in the 1950s made the study of bathymetry more useful. So, in the present times, we use the advanced multi-beam eco sounders. These are like sea beams, and we also use the side scan sonar. These are very efficient for mapping the ocean floors. This Site scan sonar system consists of CMARC, that is C mapping and remote characterization, and GLORIA, that is geological long range inclined acoustical instrument. So based on this, the ocean provinces have been divided mainly into four categories: the continental shelves, the continental slopes, including the submarine canyons the deep sea plains and the ocean trenches. So, this figure that will show you all the um, morphological features that are present or in other words, you can also say that this figure shows you the configuration of ocean floors 
starting from the continental margin where we have continental shelf followed by continental slopes then continental rise a basal plains besides that some other features such as rift valley guyots and sea mounts can also be seen in this figure so let's study them in detail now as i said earlier the first relief feature that we are studying is the continental shelf why is it named as continental shelf because it is a shelf like zone that extends from the shore beneath the ocean surface to a point where there is a marked increase in the slope angle this point where there is a marked increase that is known as the shelf break deeper portion beyond the shelf break is called as the continental slope thus the continental margin areas that are submerged under the oceanic water with average water depth of 180 meters or 100 fathoms and a gentle slope of 1 degree to 3 degrees towards the ocean is what is a continental shelf it is important to mention that 1 fathom is equal to 6 feet or 1.8 meters further this continental shelf terminates at the shelf break point which is at average depth of about 103 meters but sometimes this depth even reaches up to 300 meters the shelf break slopes at an average angle of 1 degrees to 4 degrees generally it is observed that the width of continental shelf is close to 60 kilometers but in many places it extends beyond 1500 kilometers also because this width it depends on the nature of the local and regional relief features that are present over there that means if in a region where there are very high mountains that are close and parallel to the coast they will have very narrow shelf for example the pacific continental shelf along the west coast of southern america this is about 16 kilometers due to the presence of andes mountains however these shelves are wide where the coasts are wide plains so the atlantic shelf of the east coast of north america is about 96 to 120 kilometers the extensive shelves are found in the coast of east indies arctic sea and the china sea what is interesting is these continental shelves they occupy about 8.6% of the total area of the ocean basins the passive continental margins that means which do not have sufficient tectonic activities such as folding or faulting they have relatively wider continental shelves for example the continental shelves of the east coast of north and south america whereas the active continental margins which have sufficient tectonic activity such as the continental shelves of the west coast of americas they have uh, narrow continental shelves the average depth of these continental shelf breaks is about 135 meters but it has been found to be about 350 meters around the antarctic region ecologically speaking these continental shelves are very significant because they provide us ideal fishing grounds besides they also provide ideal habitat for other marine life as well they also house the coral reefs which act as the front line natural buffers and they also house the mangrove forest both mangrove forest and the coral reef they act as buffers in case of any disaster also so let's discuss briefly about the continental shelves of india the first thing that is important is the maximum seaward limit of the continental shelf of indian coast is demarcated by 100 fathom contour besides the continental shelf along the eastern coast of india that is narrower compared to the western coast of india the width of the continental shelf in the eastern coast is about 50 kilometers while the continental shelf on the western coast they are about 150 kilometers wide these shelves are very narrow that means about say 30 to 35 kilometers of the mouths of ganga mahanadi godavari krishna 
and Kaveri, but wider of the estuaries of Narmada, Tapi and Mahi rivers. The average slope of continental shelf of eastern Indian coast is about 21 degrees, whereas it is 10 degrees near Cape Comorin and only about 1 degree near the Gulf of Cambay. So you can see we have a very wide variation in the slopes of the continental shelves in India. After this, the second major relief structure that is present in the ocean floor, these are the continental slopes. Why do we call them as continental slopes? Because these are zone of steep slope that extend from the continental shelf to the deep sea plains. The slope also varies at various places and it can be found to range from 5 degrees to more than 60 degrees at different places. The depth of water over the continental slope it also varies from 200 meters to 2000 meters that gives you an idea about the diversity of these continental slopes. Further, these continental slopes they occupy only about 8.5% of the total relief area of the ocean basins but that also varies from ocean to ocean. For example, the Atlantic Ocean has 12.4% of its total area under continental slope, the Pacific Ocean has 7% and Indian Ocean has about 6.5%. What is interesting is that the most extensive continental slopes are found between 20 degree north to 50 degree north latitudes and on 80 degree north and 70 degree south latitudes. Generally, the steep slope or the gradient of these continental slopes does not allow any marine deposition, but sometimes a thin veneer of deposits does exist. The major relief features that are found in continental slopes, they include the submarine canyons and trenches, which are generally transverse to the continental shelves and the coasts. So let us have a look at these submarine canyons. This figure represents the submarine canyons that can be seen with respect to the continental slope and the shelf break. Also, you can see a continental rise at the right end corner of the figure. So coming to these submarine canyons, the submarine canyons are very long, narrow and deep valleys and the trenches that are located in the continental shelves and the continental slopes. So they can be formed by means of erosion by two processes, either the glacial processes where the glaciers they cause the erosion and bring about the deposition or that can be non-glacial in nature. Generally, the non-glacial types of submarine canyons are more common compared to the glacial canyons. These canyons, they are generally several kilometers wide at the heads and their average length is about 16 kilometers. The average gradient of the longitudinal profile of canyons is about 1.7%. The canyons that face the river mouth are quite long but they have a gentle gradient. Well, the longitudinal course of submarine canyons is usually sinuous that means it has a wavy appearance. The canyons near the island are deep with a steep gradient of about 13.8%. The depth of submarine canyon it also varies from 610 to 915 meters but at a few places depth even exceeds 3 kilometers these submarine canyons they carry the ocean deposits but the steep valley sites are devoid of unconsolidated materials the floors they have coarser materials and the deposits they include sand silt clay gravel as well as the pebbles it has been observed that generally the submarine canyons are found more abundantly along the straight coast than highly inundated ones. Examples in Indian Ocean include the canyons in front of Indus River, along the northeast coast of Sri Lanka and along the east coast of Africa. So students, in this video, we have discussed about the two types of relief features that are present in the ocean floors or the ocean basins. These include continental shelves and continental slopes. Hope you have learned 
something about them in this video and in the next video i'll be talking about the deep sea plains and the oceanic trenches thank you